Hello and welcome back to our Ford and Fordson archive series. After the restrictions of the Second World War and the rebuilding of the towns and cities, the 1950s proved an era of great progress in both industry and commerce. Advances on the land were racing ahead as well, particularly on the machinery side, where new inventions were making life a lot easier and more efficient for the farmer. We feature seven films from that decade, documenting not only the farming history, but the social history as well. Our first film follows a Fordson demonstration team travelling 4,000 miles across Europe, a journey that lasted almost five months. Now, the main object of the exercise was to increase British exports and promote Ford tractors, but it also gave the company valuable experience of farmers' problems abroad. Let's see how they got on in European Fordson farming fairs. Over the past two years, tens of thousands of farmers have attended the fabulous Fordson farming fairs held in all parts of Great Britain. And last year, a highly skilled team of tractor demonstrators left England to make an extensive tour of Belgium, Holland, Denmark, Finland and Germany. The prime object was to increase British exports and also to give the team of young men specially chosen to act as representatives of Ford of Dagenham first-hand experience of farming problems abroad. The four Thames trucks and the van left the mechanised farming centre at Borham on the first stage of a 4,000 mile journey across land and sea, which would last nearly five months. At Tilbury Docks, the results of weeks of careful planning became apparent. Each member of the team carried all the vital papers, passport, visas, customs documents to ensure that there was nothing to hinder the program. Although the trucks carried a conglomeration of equipment, from a large generator and radio controlled tractor complete with plough to photographic equipment and first aid kits, there was no delay in getting aboard. The Bardic ferry was due to sail on the afternoon time. Now the beginning of the journey, from the works to a London River barge. with evidence of the export volume forming a guard of honor on the way. Stage two, by barge to the docks, a few miles up the Thames from the Ford wharves. Crossing of the sheaf went on all day and was open to anyone brave enough to try. It entailed a knack rather than strength. The high bar was adjustable, and as a competitor achieved one height, he went for the next. The top was most difficult to reach, but the determination was there, and the sheaf was never idle for long. The young farmer's interest in animals and plants has not deterred his interest in the mechanical side of agriculture. His club activities include machinery classes and competition, also trips to tractor and implement manufacturers. He soon becomes able to discuss drawbar horsepower with the best of them. Of course, these future farm owners could appreciate the influences of the new Radio Major, the famous radio control tractor. First shown in 1955, it has been demonstrated over a large section of the country, and its fame has even spread abroad. The younger ones found it specially intriguing and stayed with it to the last. But Selecto Speed by Ford lets you shift on the go. Here is a Ford Selecto Speed tractor doing one of the tougher farm jobs. A four-bottom plow moving from sandy loam into heavy clay soil. 
a workload change that is terrific without stopping. Another workload change. The sound of the engine, the feel of the work, tells the operator what to do. The workload increases. The operator flicks the control lever, and Selecto Speed brings a new power combination to the planetary gear system. A lower speed with more full power. Up to 250% increase for heavy jobs such as plow. Now, his load is decreasing. He selects a higher speed by fingertip control. At no time does he stop to shift gears. And he can get any speed in the 10 speed range, not merely the next one as with some tractors. Further, he does not use a foot clutch when getting the new speed, not ever. <laughs> 